Welcome to the 2020 Jones Invitational American Rules Croquet Tournament put on by the Sarasota County Croquet Club in Venice, Florida in late January, early February. Hans Peterson is the tournament director and Nancy Hart is the manager. This edition of the tournament is dedicated to the memory of Fred Jones, America's croquet mentor who at the age of 92 after a day on the croquet lawn passed away in November of 2019. This is a championship A flight block game, first day of the tournament between Macy White and Webster Bull. Webster's coming in with blue. Brian Hovis is your videographer and his camera is positioned on the west boundary of court number one, which gives you a perspective on how big this place really is. It also decreases the traffic noise because that boulevard which affected the other videos so much is further away as you can see. Those are morning shadows. The sun obviously to the right in the east and the Gulf of Mexico to the left about a mile away. These guys are just unbelievable. From that swing, he obviously didn't mean to jaws that ball, and red's probably not the best ball to leave in the jaws when blue's already in the game anyway provide some opportunities for black. Ah, I was hoping for a drag roll. That shadow is Brian Hovis, your videographer. It's the closest he'll get to appearing on camera. He's going to hit this ball on the seventh cast. If he takes a lot fewer later in the game, it's because I edited him out, not because he changed his swing pattern. This virtual deadness board hopefully is obvious. It adds clip position as well.
I just reread the article that Bob Allman published in Croquet World back in the late 90s by Mick Mihas on the out game. Mihas used it because it put people off their game. They weren't comfortable with the idea. Now it's a very popular defensive and offensive tactic. Rich Schiller knows that misplaced position is one of the seven not-so-deadly sins in croquet for which intervention by a referee, a spectator, board keeper, or even the opponent is permitted because there's no penalty involved. You may not intervene if there is a penalty involved. So if a player is about to shoot at the wrong hoop, you don't say anything. If they make the wrong hoop, you don't say anything because it's up to the opponent to recognize that the fault was committed. It's only when they try to take the unearned continuation shot that you're allowed to intervene. Two balls for hoop one, two balls for hoop three. Macy knocked Black into the game, so he's responsible for that clip position, and he appropriately moves it to hoop two. The rule book imposes no obligation on him, though, to draw to Webster's attention what just happened. I don't think he saw it, though, because he was heading up to corner three for this roquet. He's looking to see what's going on around hoop one. I'm pretty sure he doesn't realize that black is out there to be used. I talked to Bob Kroger about this situation and he agreed that the rule book does not obligate the player to notify the opponent when he peels the opponent's ball through a hoop. It is the responsibility of each player in scoring a point for any ball to make sure that the clips are in the correct position at the end of the turn.
while he's overpowering blue, I think they must have moved yellow for the double banking game to start, and now they're trying to make sure it's back in the right position. There's a lot of folks participating in this decision. There's no way Webster Bull would do this if he knew his ball was in the game. Now he knows, but he accepts it graciously. It seems a little unfair, but he didn't notice that his black clip was missing, and he wasn't watching. And you can always ask about the state of the game, and the opponent has to answer the question. So this is not an example of misinformation. Just a reminder that after all that activity, the board hasn't actually changed. And also, nobody's ever complained about it, but I realize after 100 videos that that board should come off the edge of the screen like that so that if you watch it in a different aspect ratio, it won't be clipped. So the miscue with black allowed Macy to move the opponent balls around 
He's opponent dead, but he's still alive on his partner. And yellow, with some digging, may get a break out of this. Unless, of course, black hits blue. But he doesn't want to give him two balls to work with up by hoop two. I keep harping on using a drive shot instead of a roll shot in this position. Watch how Macy does it. Nice and gentle, you make the hoop and yellow is far enough out that you don't have to baby the hoop and you might get a rush out of it. Tomorrow you get the morning games. Yes. You know, with the format we have, it worked out pretty well It's being able to get. Because we have like two blocks within each flight. You can have one play morning, one play afternoon for the most part. Which I think is good. I think people, nobody likes to sit around all day. A morning game and then wait yeah. four hours yeah. to play another game. That's smart thinking. But with our with our members, most of them are over seventy, so they they get stuck playing two games in a row or possibly three. We gotta watch them, make sure they don't drop in the middle of the court. For his Reds hoop, one row K and Macy's off. Macy can be pretty aggressive when he needs to be, but 
seems to me mostly he doesn't make a lot of mistakes and he's very good at making the opponent pay for his or her mistakes. Or should I say their mistakes in this day and age? Even though my high school English teacher would box my ears for doing that. The risk he runs doing it this way is that he probably can't hit blue. After he makes the hoop, he wisely left black as an escape ball, but then that makes the break a little harder to dig out. The risk you run doing it the way I like to do it, which is to go beyond the hoop and knock that ball back out, is that that shot at that ball in the hoop is more difficult. You just have to pick your risk. Macy's mallet is made in Australia by Peter Coles. It's called the PFC hoop maker. It's very solid. The ping takes a little getting used to. But he's used it to get to a handicap of minus two and a half in what I think is probably record time. Yellow is for hoop two. Blue is dead on red. Sweet, and because blue is dead on black and red, black can't really set anything up. And now with blue blocked from yellow by red, blue can't pick up yellow, send it to black and park in front of hoop two for a three ball break for black.
Black's a couple yards off the lawn. Red is for hoop six and clean. And I take it back about not being very aggressive. Macy's up by two hoops. I think it's Johnny Osborne who likes to say, if you're ahead, you don't need to attack in American rules. So that attack got him three ball dead, but he's right in front of his hoop, and he did manage to get the opponent balls completely spread out, and since blue is dead on black, Webster's going to have to hit something to take advantage of red's deadness. Bingo. Guarding Black's hoop and setting up for his own at the same time. Once again, attack before you make the hoop. Webster's using an Oakley Predator mallet. David Maloof uses that. The most prominent recent endorsement, though, is Matthew Essek. Got second place in the AC World Championships against Reg Bamford using that mallet.
Yellow is clean and apparently has a good view of the two balls on the boundary over on the west side. So it's safe to try for the wire. Did he get it? Obviously not. This is break to the peg material here and try to peel red through six on the way so the lead doesn't have to be set at the center hoops.
now he can either two ball around to six or he can get a rush north out of four down to six and use red as the pioneer for five. My home court drops two feet between the south and the north boundaries, so I use this method all the time because that split shot to four and five is way uphill. Ooh, that was costly. Partly because he missed the chance to keep yellow dead and partly because blue is sitting there ready for yellow's break.
Yellow and red are both for the same hoop. If he peels red before yellow makes the hoop, it's a straight peel. If he waits and peels it after yellow makes the hoop, it's called a posthumous peel. It's a term from AC Croquet, and I think it basically means that if you do the peel posthumously, then the peeling turn dies. If you have an escape ball, you can keep going on a regular break. So I guess that's a failed posthumous peel. But at least red is still in hoop shooting position. And the only reason to do this is to get clean. Five thirty four left in the game, I think. It'd be tempting to park yellow up on the north boundary, but he's assuming blue's gonna get the one back clearance since it's the ball that's partner dead.
That's a very impressive shot. As we saw in another video, though, if he had left Black a foot and a half off the boundary, it would have been a lot easier. When he put Black out, he knew what he was going to have to do with Blue. Game time, red is first ball in last terms. The rule book doesn't actually spell out any obligation to announce first ball in last terms. In fact, Fred Jones was of the opinion that one should just say game time. And then because both first and last turns and the score affect your tactical decisions at the end of the game, they really are the player's responsibility. If there's a dispute or confusion, one can always ask for the state of the game. If red had not come to rest before it was hit by black, there might be a case for making him replay that shot because of misplaced position. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you have an opinion about that. Down by six. So black has to get through four back to tie or find some way to get blue involved since red was first ball. Same thing, he's going to want to hit the back ball. I think that may be a 12 inch mallet head instead of 11, like I said before. This is a remarkable series of shots he's put together. It really is true that the opponent most to be feared is one who has nothing to lose.
It really is one of the beauties of this game that it's not over till it's over. Also worth noting is that when you're double banking in championship flight, everybody pays attention. David Ekstrom playing stripes is staying out of the way over there because he knows how critical this is to the outcome of the solids game. What an effort. So with strong break play, excellent tactical decision making, and gracious acceptance of the opportunities provided by the opponent, Macy White takes it over Webster Bull 13 to 8 the first day of the tournament. And once again, in fond remembrance of America's croquet mentor, Fred Jones.